Okay, so I picked up the, I guess, JYE Tech uh, oscilloscope kit from SparkFun, and I just kind of sorted out the parts in the box. So there's the little screen, uh, the back plate, I guess, the front plate, and the parts, some switches, there's the power supply jack, standoffs to put the sandwich the boards together, there's capacitors, screws, headers, tactile switches, and that's a an inductor, and then the hookup for the probes, which it came with some simple alligator clip probes. So there we go, and then main board is over here, and I've got the voltage regulator and the heatsink already on it. Um, I haven't soldered it down yet, but I think the instructions are a little bit out of order. I, I think, yes, they're wise to warn you about possibly melting your capacitors by soldering things next to them. So, you know, if possible, mount your capacitors last and you'll completely avoid that issue. Uh, so I started with the voltage regulator and I'll solder that up. But yeah, I got my magnifying glass, my soldering station, and I've got my tablet with my instructions here on it so that's handy I can you know refer to my instructions so all ready to go and I will only describe just a few little tips about building this like don't necessarily follow the order in the book you know in the instructions uh, you might want to change the order of some stuff So on these switches here, you can see they're a little taller than they are wide. All right, so don't don't get them in the wrong way. Right, you can see it's in one direction it's it's too wide. So that's correct. Right, big difference there. So it's easy to get the switches correctly oriented, no problem. And yeah, I would do those first. Because here's the pins from that one. And they're right, if that capacitor is sitting there, soldering this leg becomes kind of dangerous. Same for over here. It's close to this. So, I think soldering the switches first is a good idea. So yeah, okay, with the, all the buttons mounted, easily to see that, you know, you risk running into other stuff there. And on the other side, you kind of don't. Those are where the capacitors go. And I think I can reach those from this side, no problem, with the switches there. So, basically, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, these switches here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do those first. They fit really, really tightly, so be careful when you're sticking them in. They have a lot of pins to line up, so check the pins, make sure they're lined up, and stick them in there. They are really tight. They snap in really tight. So if you feel like you're maybe pushing too hard, just be careful and push a little harder. So, by the way, all of these capacitors, all of the little ones are 100, and the big one is a 470. So you don't really have to sort these out, um, just sort them by size onto the board, right? Uh, the big one goes right there, and all the little ones go there. Make sure you don't get the inductor and the capacitor mixed up, the inductor capacitor. The rest of the 100s go on those circles there. All of those are going to be real easy to solder after I get done doing the switches. So I'm going to solder, fire up my uh, 
soldering iron and do all those and the headers there's some headers that go on and then I'm gonna clip the so on the other side the voltage regulator these protrude up so you're gonna have to clip those off before you can mount the screen and I think that's what I'll do last is mount the screen but I'll be doing the headers for the screen uh, first okay here's the board with most of the components done uh, most of this was pretty easy uh, the, the capacitors and everything were real simple some of my solder jobs aren't real perfect but they're all working and then so then you test you, you get out your multimeter and you do a test and it took me a while to find it but test point five is where you're supposed to go test point five is right there on the board next to this capacitor right under the voltage regulator so you test for five volts there and if you get that then you connect this little jumper wire right below there test for five volts again that's all good so I'm gonna proceed to soldering the LCD and that's basically one of the last steps I did all my switches and everything first like I said and that did make it easier to do those capacitors on the other side eh, okay I decided to like record the moment of truth I guess so I'm gonna plug it in and it says you're supposed to like see the web address and stuff um, let's see what happens here so that looks good oh it's yeah displaying the web address the contrast is a little light but let's see if my phone can focus on that there we go. Okay, so there it is, all buttoned up, ready to go. Uh, make sure you put your hats on your buttons before you, uh, before you try to button it up. I forgot to do that. Um, I used Loctite on the screws. Let's see, I attached my probes, the simple like alligator clip probes that it comes with. I checked my parts box, don't have any parts left. Uh, that's basically what it looks like. There's plenty of space for the heat sink, I guess, there. I think I might like it. Well, that capacitor's pretty tall, but yeah, that's that's basically what it what it looks like, and it is all working. And I'll do some videos about how it works later. I'll measure some RC signals and stuff. But yeah works all right now if you're a beginner I would not suggest this kit it's it's got some tricky parts to it and if you're not experienced at soldering the, you know there are some parts where you might melt things or screw things up but if you have help or you know if you've done a couple of kits like this I think you should be fine go ahead and and go for it but yeah I'm happy it works